number two. We're number two. We're number two. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten sports movies where the team loses. Feel the rhythm. Feel the ride. Get on up. It's bobsled time. It's not about that scoreboard out there. It's not about winning. For this list, we'll be looking at the endings of sports movies wherein the protagonists do not ultimately emerge victorious. And even though it's in the title, films don't have to center on team sports to merit inclusion, so single sports like boxing are fair game. Naturally, the list is going to be one giant spoiler, so you have been warned. What sports movie loss was the most devastating for you? Lament in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, A League of Their Own. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. As we'll see with many entries on this list, the final game of A League of Their Own is about as close as it can be. This fictionalized retelling of the inaugural season of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League follows the Rockford Peaches, led by Gina Davis's superstar catcher Dottie Hinson, as they push the Racine Bells to a decisive Game 7. In it, Dottie gets the go-ahead RBI in the top of the ninth against her sister, Kit. Kit, forever in the shadow of her sister, gets the chance to redeem herself by miraculously hustling for an inside-the-park home run. High fastballs. Just can't hit him. Can't lay off. All right. The throw beats her to the plate, but the collision knocks the ball out of Dottie's glove, sealing the championship for the Bells. Number 9, Mystery Alaska. Something else we'll be seeing on this list are small upstart squads that come out of nowhere to challenge the big dogs. And it doesn't get any more nowhere than the fictional town of Mystery Alaska, where the propensity for quality amateur hockey draws the interest of major league talent. I play hockey and I fornicate because those are the two most fun things in cold weather. Mystery manages to get the New York Rangers of the NHL to fly in for an exhibition game. Though they at one point surrender five straight goals, the Mystery Boys storm back in the final minutes. They line up the game-tying shot, but the puck ultimately bangs off the crossbar as time expires. Though defeated, Mystery proves they belong on the same ice, and two of their stars even get inducted into New York's farm system. Number eight, whip it. We're number two. We're number two. We're number two. We're number two. We've all had to navigate schedule conflicts, but usually the conflicting things aren't a beauty pageant and a roller derby. Roller derby? However, that's exactly the position the teenaged Bliss is faced with at the end of Whip It. Though Bliss would rather compete at the roller derby championship, pressure from Bliss's domineering mother forces the teenager to do the other. Compassion wins the day, however, as Bliss's father convinces his wife that their child's happiness is the most important thing. I can take losing the money. I cannot take losing the chance for our kid to be happy. Again donning the moniker Babe Ruthless, Bliss and the rest of the Hurl Scouts come close to victory, but more importantly, come together as a team. Just like the beginning of the film, we are again inspired by their positive post-game attitude. Number 7, Friday Night Lights. To me, being perfect is not about that scoreboard out there. It's not about winning. 
There's the old adage that says football is a game of inches, and never is that more evident than at the end of Friday Night Lights. Though the film veers quite a good deal from the real events upon which it is based, what transpires on screen makes for truly exciting drama. Playing in front of 55,000 for the state championship, the Permian Panthers are initially severely outmatched against the much larger Dallas Carter Cowboys. In proper sports movie fashion, an inspiring halftime speech gives Permian the drive they need to claw back in the game. I want you to put each other in your hearts forever, because forever is about to happen here in just a few minutes. It all comes down to the last play as Permian scrambles to find the end zone. When the dust settles, it's revealed they came just inches short. Absolutely devastating. Number 6. Kingpin We move over to single sports now with this comedy cult classic. Years after losing his right hand, bowling phenom Roy Munson looks to reclaim his shot at glory by coaching Amish prospect Ishmael to a $1 million jackpot at a tournament in Reno. Okay, you want to bowl for some big money, hey? But uh, I'll lose my entire bonus check because I'm so bombed. As fate would have it, however, Ishmael breaks his hand in a freak wall-punching accident. A real Munson. <laughs> With Ishmael in his corner, it's instead Roy who enters the tournament using his rubber prosthetic hand to get the job done. We don't quite know how that works, but Roy manages to bowl his way into the final against the man responsible for his injury. Roy has the lead in the final frame, but McCracken bowls three strikes in a row to win by a single pin. Number 5. Bring It On Even in competition, there are more important things than winning, such as the respect for oneself and one's opponent. In Bring It On, the Rancho Carne Toros cheer squad must rediscover that respect upon learning their previous routines were lifted from those of the East Compton Clovers squad. Our game is bad, we're without peers, so get that weak man out of here! Try to steal our bit, but you look like shit, but we're the ones who are down with it! Newly appointed captain Torrance Shipman looks to rectify her predecessor's cheating ways, but there are some serious speed bumps along the way. You wanna make it right? Then when you go to nationals, bring it. Don't slack off because you feel sorry for us. That way, when we beat you, we'll know it's because we're better. At Nationals, the New Look Toros ultimately cede their titles to the Clovers. However, now that the Toros have an identity of their own, the two squads are able to overcome their strife and come together in the spirit of friendly competition. I respect what you guys did out there. You guys were good. Thanks. You were better. We were, huh? <laughs> Number four, Tin Cup. Give me another ball. Take a drop, Roy. Roy, just... Give me another ball. Winning a title certainly puts you in the record books, but it's the individual moments that people remember. Case in point, no one thought Roy McAvoy would be in contention for the US Open in 1996's Tin Cup, but it wasn't his final score that shocked them. When faced with the same shot on the 18th hole he missed the last three days, Roy foregoes his lead and goes for it again, only for it to land squarely in the water once more. Rather than press on and accept the tie, Roy goes for it continuously, miraculously managing to get it in the hole on his last ball. Despite Roy losing handily, his love interest Molly puts it best in describing what he's achieved. No one's gonna remember the Open five years from now, who won, who lost, but they're gonna remember your 12. My God. Number three. Cool runnings. Feel the rhythm. Feel the ride. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool runnings. Oh, cool runnings is another biographical sports film that fudges the truth for the sake of suspense, but we're not going to let that keep us from cheering. Fact or fiction, an Olympic bobsled team from Jamaica is a Cinderella story just by getting to the big dance, let alone actually contending. However, the dramatization in this Disney classic certainly made us believe. Maybe not on their first day, but definitely on their second. On the last run, the Jamaicans look poised to finish in record time, but tragedy strikes when their sled crashes. Unscathed and undeterred, the bobsledders carry their sled across the finish line on foot, their determination more than earning a slow clap.
Number 2. The Bad News Bears When it comes to sports movies, there's no zeros to hero story quite like the Bad News Bears. The Pee Wee Bears are the definition of a hopeless team, forfeiting their first game before they even get the chance to bat. It's a forfeit, we forfeit the game. You forfeit? Yeah. That's it! That's a game! Yet somehow, with a roster of misfits and a drunken coach, they're able to turn their season around in a hurry. Okay, okay, with the help of a couple of ringers, which are staples in the sports movie genre. Look, Bowler Maker, you're not my father, and I ain't interested in playing baseball for you anymore. So why don't you get back into that sardine can of yours and go, go vacuum the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. I've got business to take care of. Though the Bears have a title victory in their sights, Coach Buttermaker rightly realizes winning isn't everything and subs his bench warmers in, so everyone can have fun. The Bears, of course, lose, but they certainly celebrate like they won with beer showers. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. North Dallas 40. Dallas fumbles what would have been a game-tying PAT. Snap, the ball gets away from Hartman, it's on the ground. Chicago recovers, the game is over. The Chicago Marauders have held off the North Dallas rally to win 14 to 13, and what a finish. Eddie the Eagle, his landing isn't pretty, but at least he recovers. <laughs> Coach Carter, they lost in the playoffs, but won in school. Moneyball. The A's won 20 in a row, but still lost three out of five in the playoffs. What the Minnesota Twins exposed is the fact that the Oakland A's were fundamentally not a sound baseball team. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Rocky. The Best Picture winner from 1976 will likely go down as the definitive sports movie and what people think of when protagonists lose at the end of one. The ultimate underdog, Rocky Balboa, an ostensible nobody from the streets of Philadelphia, is granted a match against heavyweight boxing champion Apollo Creed. Pure and simple, nobody expects Rocky to contend, but he sees it as an opportunity to make something out of himself. <laughs> He trains and trains and trains some more, and his tenacity ensures he only loses to Creed via a split decision, though he really couldn't care less. Agent! Rocky! Hey, where's your hat? I love you! I love you! It's such a memorable outcome that the franchise replicated it in later installments Rocky Balboa and Creed. You're a great champion. You got heart. Thanks for the opportunity. Good man. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.